Hello and welcome to this second tutorial in this free Baselight Learning Program series. Today I'm going to show you how to start a new project in Baselight. Um, again, I'm using Baselight Look, same as Andy used last week, but everything that I show you uh, will be the same on a full Baselight system. Now I've already got Baselight Look running on my machine, so I'm going to share my screen and then we can get started. Now you'll notice that whenever you start Baselight, the Job Manager window opens. Now the Job Manager window is what we use in Baselight to manage projects. Um, we can use it to open an existing project or we can create a new project, which is what I'm going to do now. Now before I do that, I'm going to just explain a little bit about how Baselight actually stores the project data. And by project data, I mean all the data that's related to the work that you're doing. So grading, um, editing shots, adding filters, transforms, and so on. I'm not talking about the actual media itself. So in Baselight, all that project data is stored in a jobs database. We don't store it in a file um, as uh, other systems do. Everything's stored into a database. We divide up our work into separate projects, which we call jobs, and that's the highest level within the database. So in Baselight, um, a, a job would typically encompass the whole project. For example, a job may be a feature film, or if you're working on a TV series, the entire TV series would be contained in a single job. Now within each job, we split the work up into as many scenes as necessary. Now a scene in Baselight is simply a collection of the shots you want to work on together. And all the shots contained within a scene form the scene's timeline. So you can consider a timeline and a Baselight scene as effectively the same thing. Now I should point out that the term scene in Baselight has nothing to do with the scene in a script. Typically a scene or a timeline may contain the shots for a single episode of a TV series, for example, or it could be a collection of VFX shots. Or if you're, if you're grading dailies, then a single scene may contain all the rushes for a day's shoot. Okay, I'll just switch back to the Baselight user interface now. And so in the Job Manager, this second column here, which is labeled Job, at the top of that, if I click on the Actions button, which is the button with the little cogwheel, we can select a new job. So if I click on that, we now have to give the job a name and I'm going to call it Bob's Movie. And there we go, we've created a new job. You can see it in our list of jobs. Now you may notice that we didn't have to put any other details in. Um, we didn't have to put in any parameters about the frame rate or the format that we want to work in. And that's because in Baselight, that information is all stored in the scene, not in the job. So the next thing we need to do is to create a scene. And you'll notice that this second column, which now says scenes at the top, um, is empty at the moment. But before I start, before I create a new scene, um, I'm actually going to check that Baselight, my Baselight system is set up correctly for the project that I'm working on. Um, so to check the setup, we go to the setup menu, which is in the Baselight menu at the top here. We select setups. And I'll just close that for now. You'll see that we have a list of all the setups that are available for this machine. And the one that we're currently using is shown with a tick and it's called HD25P MacBook. Now, if you check this list on your system, you probably won't have a setting called this. Um, that's because it's one that I've created by modifying an existing setup, this one in fact. And I started off by duplicating the setup and then editing the settings for the project that I'm working on. So editing the settings, uh, to, to edit the settings, we actually open up the editor by clicking on this button here. And you can see there are a lot of settings that we can change. Um, Andy briefly showed you this yesterday because one of the settings you can change is to do with the, the default viewing color space for your display. And that should be set up so that it matches the display that you're using for the project. Now, we're not going to go through these settings today. That's subject of a future tutorial. But the things I do want to check before we start creating new scenes are the settings on the new scenes tab. So if I select that, um, 
and again, there's a lot of settings in here I'm not going to cover, but the ones that are important, um, which I do need to check, are the working format, which for this setup is set to 1920 by 1080, the frame rate, which is set to 25p, and the working color space, which is set to film light T log E gamut. Now remember, they're the settings for this particular setup. If I were to choose this setup, for example, the 4K film setup I've created here, you can see that the working format for this one is set to 4096 by 1716 with a frame rate of 24p. Um, so I would choose that if I was working on a different type of project. But for this project, this is the setup I'm choosing. Um, now, before I close the setups, there's one other setup um, that I wanted to show you, and this is also quite important, and that is the in the image containers and proxies section. Uh, it's what we call the default container directory. Now, later on, you'll find that when you actually start bringing media into a timeline in Baselight, Baselight will assume that it's coming from a specific location, and the location it's looking for is the default container directory. Um, now, obviously, you can change that, but it's useful to have a default which is in the, the place where most of your media lives. And on my system, I have a local RAID connected, and I'm going to choose that, choose, in fact, choose a directory on that as my default container. So if I go to the RAID drive and choose media, which is the directory that contains most of my media, and I'll set that up as my default container for this particular setup. And that will be used for all new scenes again. So I'll save those settings and close setups. Now, most of those settings um, won't actually be loaded until we restart Baselight. So what you would typically do would be to quit Baselight and then restart it. But as an alternative to that, and in fact, when you start a new project, um, you probably want to change the setting, the setup, before you run Baselight, rather than having to open Baselight, change the setup, close it and reopen it. You can run setups from a standalone utility, and I'll just show you where that is. If you go to the Baselight Look folder in the current software, um, there's an icon with a spanner in it. And if I double click on that, you'll see that will open up the setups utility, but that can be run outside Baselight. So you would choose the setup you want to use or create a new one for a new type of project and then click on Save and Start Baselight. And that will then close the setups editor and start Baselight automatically. Now, obviously, you don't have to create a separate setup for every project you work on. These setups are uh, for a particular type of project or a particular workflow. So if you're working on a TV series, then you may have a setup that applies to all your TV series. If you're working on a film project, you may have one or two film setups that you would choose. So as I said, it's not something you need to do for every single project. Um, it's more a workflow setup. Okay, back to the job manager. And we'll now create a new scene by clicking on the actions button at the top of the scenes column. And I'll choose new scene. And in here, um, you can see that we're now being asked for some basic parameters to do with the scene. And these are effectively going to set up the timeline for the scene. And as we chose that particular HD 1920 by 1080 25p setup, it's automatically put in defaults for the working format, the working frame rate, and also the working color space. Now, the choice of the working format and the working frame rate will typically be dictated um, by the project itself. So if you're working on a TV project, which is to be delivered in HD 25 frames per second, then these would obviously be logical working settings to use. Um, however, you may have within a project, you may have a particular scene that you want to work at a different resolution. You may want a scene to be UHD or, or maybe even 4K. So you could choose for a particular scene, you can choose to override this default setting by choosing another format or in fact, another frame rate from this list. But typically most of the scenes in a particular job would have the same working format and the same working frame rate. Um, the choice of working color space um, is also typically dictated by uh, 
the project parameters. However, this is a pretty wide subject and certainly not something that we've got time to go into now. Um, what we do recommend though is that for the working color space, you always choose one which is scene referred. And again, I, I can't cover that now. That'll be covered in our tutorial on, tutorial on color spaces. But scene referred color spaces um, all have this little camera icon in the color space name. So for the working color space, you should always use one which has a little camera icon here. Okay, I'm gonna give it a name. And for this one, I'm gonna call the scene camera test shots because this particular scene is what I'm gonna use for grading some test shots that I've, I've uh, shot for this particular movie. Um, and before I click on the OK button, I'll just point out this other option here, which says scene template. Um, now scene templates can set all sorts of other parameters up within the scene, and that's a, a more advanced way of working. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave that set to none, but we will cover scene templates in the future. Okay, I'll click on the OK button and, ah, yes. Now there's one more thing that we have to do when we create a new job. Now, because this is the first time we're using this job, Baselight needs to know what format to use for the job gallery. Now, galleries, again, are a subject that we're going to cover in a future tutorial. Um, and typically, you would just choose the default setting that it offers here. Um, so for now, that's all I'm gonna do. Just click on this button. Now, if I create further scenes within this job, that box won't pop, pop up again because we will already have a gallery for the job. Um, incidentally, galleries are used for storing grades, so you can recall them at a later date. But as I said, we're gonna cover galleries um, in a different tutorial. So you can now see that we've got our scene um, in our scenes list. And it's got a little green padlock icon here, which indicates that that scene is open at the moment. Um, and if, if you look at the top of the screen here, you can see we've also got a little green padlock and then the scene name next to it. And the scene name is actually um, indicated, it's got the, the job as well as the scene itself and also the working format here at the top. Now, the fact that it's got a green padlock icon means that the scene is open and I can write to it. Now, if you remember, um, at the beginning, I said that Baselight stores all the scene information, all of your grading data and everything, all into a database. And if I just switch back to the slides, um, it's possible for, if this is our database with our jobs in it, it's possible for other Baselight systems to connect to the same database. Um, this is one of the benefits of using a database system. Um, now, if another machine tried to connect to the database that I'm using and they tried to open the same scene, they would get a message saying that the scene couldn't be opened or could only be opened for read access because only one system can be writing into a scene at any one time. So they could still open the scene, but they would then end up with a red padlock icon rather than a green one, which indicates that they're only able to view changes that are made to the scene, but not actually make any changes themselves. And that's a mode that we call follow mode in Baselight because it allows a, another Baselight system to follow the work that you're doing on your Baselight system. And in fact, it will even allow you to follow the cursor. So on the remote system or on the other Baselight system, you can see changes as they're made in real time. Um, now, if I wanted to connect to another Baselight system and open jobs, open scenes, from the database on another system. In this first column here, rather than using the local host, which is where my database lives, I can add other systems to my hosts list. For example, there's a machine called Z8, uh, which I can add here. And if I click on the OK button, it will now show us a list of jobs which are available on Z8. Now it's actually showing us that it is una unavailable at the moment. And the reason for that is I do actually have a connection to that other machine, but we don't have Baselight Look installed on that other system. And um, as we mentioned at the very beginning, the databases used on Baselight Look and the full Baselight systems are different. So that means that you can't actually open projects from a, base, a full Baselight system on Baselight Look and vice versa. Um, 
So if you wanted to open a project from another base light look system, then that would be available in this list. Okay, that, I think that's enough talk about the job manager itself. Um, but before I close the job manager window, there are a few other features that I'll point out um, that are useful to know to help you when you're managing uh, jobs and scenes. Um, first of all, at the bottom down here, um, there's an information section and that shows us information about the currently selected scene. Um, so you can see the, the date that it was asked, last accessed, um, when it was first created. And if somebody else has that particular scene open, you'd also see there was a, be a lock here with the name of the machine that also had that scene open. Um, we can also type in a note, and this is quite useful. Um, let me just type a note in here. Camera tests from shoot day one. And because we're storing data inside a database, um, sometimes you want to find out information about other scenes, but you don't want to have to go through and open each scene. So just by clicking on the scene itself, you can read that note without having to actually open the scene. So it's quite useful to add in these notes. Um, at the top of each column, there's a little F button. And if I open a, a job which has got a lot of scenes in it, Okay, there's quite a few scenes in this one. Sometimes you can have a very long list which goes uh, well be beyond the, the, the bottom of the column. And so you can use the F button to filter the list and just by typing in a few characters, it'll only show you uh, scenes that have those characters within the name. So that's a, an easy way of filtering out uh, a long list. And that uh, F button exists at the top of all these other columns as well. In fact, it can be found in a lot of places in Baselight where there are lists. Um, there's also a refresh button. Um, when you make updates, sometimes the list doesn't update automatically if you change something. So you can get it to reread a particular job contents by clicking on this reload button here. If we have a long list and we want to sort these into a different order, now remember that this isn't a list of files within a directory. All of this is contained within the database. So we can't simply go to a directory and sort the files in a directory into a different order. So we've got a couple of options under the options button here that allow us to sort the scenes by name, by modification date, uh, and you see the list of dates here, or by creation date. Uh, similarly, jobs can be sorted by their size, and that's the actual physical number of objects in the database, so the physical amount of space they take up in the database. Um, or they can just be sorted alphabetically, which is the default sort order. Um, okay, so we'll go back here now. Oh, and finally, this, um, this button here allows us to bookmark specific locations within the database. So if there's a place that we want to jump back to in the database quickly, we can just add a bookmark for it. And so wherever we are in our list here, if we want to quickly get back, we can just choose that from our list of bookmarks. One other thing uh, you might need to do in, in Baselight um, is of course, save a job, uh, sorry, save a scene so it can be opened up on another Baselight system. Um, or you may want to bring in a job that's been saved from another system. Um, now again, because all of this information is stored inside a database, we can't simply go to a folder somewhere and copy a file or a collection of files. So instead, in, in the job manager, we have an export and an import option. So we can either export individual scenes, um, or we can export a whole job. So again, at the top of the the corresponding column, we've got an action. On the actions for the scene, we can export the scene. And if we want to export a whole job, which would be all the scenes in a job, we can export the job. So let me export this job here, even though I've not really done anything in it yet. So I'll click on the export job uh, option here. And it's now asking us where we want to put the exported data. It's going to be stored in a file, um, and I'm just going to put it in a, an exports directory on the desktop. And I just click on OK, 
And that's now written a, in this case, it's a job export. So it's written a BLS job file. Um, and that can then be imported into another Baselight system using the import scene or job archive option again on the actions menu here. Now remember that these jobs and scenes um, are only compatible with the same type of database. So I can't export a job or a scene from Baselight Look and then import it into a full Baselight system. It would have to be imported into another Baselight Look system. Although if you're working with the older Baselight student software, you can import and export jobs and scenes between Baselight Look and Baselight Student. Okay, before I close the job manager, I'll just go back to this um, bigger job here. Um, and you can see that uh, we've already got quite a few scenes in this job. And with big projects, you can end up with literally hundreds or maybe even thousands of scenes. If it was a big feature film, you could end up with a very big list of scenes. So rather than putting scenes all together inside the job, we have the option of, uh, of, of gathering them together and putting them into folders. So we can have within our database, um, each job can contain folders, and then we can put the scenes that we want together in a, in a single folder. It's literally just a way of grouping together uh, common scenes within a job. So to create a folder, that's done at the scene level. So if I select, in fact, I'll go back to the, the job that I've just created today. And from the actions menu on the scene column, I'll create, I'll click on new folder. And all I need to do now is to give it a folder name. So I'm just going to call this folder tests. And I can now move this camera test shot scene into the tests folder. And then when I have other test material or other other scenes that I'm working on with tests, I can put those into the tests folder as well. And it'll keep them separate from all the other scenes that I'm working on in this particular job. Now I can't move that into the tests folder at the moment because it's currently open. So I need to close it first. Um, now I can either close the scene from the menu up here or I can use a keyboard shortcut. And as with many things in Baselight, there are keyboard shortcuts for them. So I'll just um, show you this screen here, which summarizes some of the useful keyboard shortcuts for the job manager. The job manager window itself can be opened and closed um, using the shortcut Control J. And these are the shortcuts on a Mac. On a Linux system, on a big Baselight system, um, the shortcuts are slightly different because you use the Windows key instead of the Control key. Um, and on the Mac, the command key um, is replaced with the control key on a Linux system. So it's a little bit confusing, but those shortcuts are essentially the same. It's just the, the, the accelerator key that's different. So if I want to close the current scene, I can use command W. If I want to save it, if I've made any changes to it, um, uh, it's command S. And I can open the last scene that was opened using shift command O. Um, and another helpful shortcut, even though it's not specifically to do with the job manager, um, is Command H, which minimizes Baselight to the desktop to allow you to then access other, other applications that may be running um, at the same time. So we're going to use Command W to close the scene that's currently open. And now that I've closed it, the, the little padlock icon has gone and you can see it's no longer listed at the top of the screen here. And I can now use the actions button to move the scene into the folder that I created called tests. And now inside the tests folder, you can see we currently have one scene called camera test shots. So I can open that scene again. Um, easiest way to open that, I can click on the open button here or I can just simply double click on it. And I can now finally close the job manager and we've now got a an open scene with an empty timeline uh, ready to import media to start doing grades. And that's the subject of our next tutorial. So I'll turn my camera back on. Um, so I don't know, uh, Victor, uh, were there any, any questions during that session? <laughs>
Yeah, um, one of the questions we asked was like, if we can track if somebody's working on the same media and another scene. Um, the, the only way to tell if somebody is working on a specific scene, if I just um, open the, the job manager again, is um, at the bottom here, you can see from the locks, um, if I choose, for example, if I choose one of these scenes here, you'll see that there's no lock listed. Um, so any scene that is open currently will have a lock for the user who's opened the scene. So you, you do have a list down here, but there isn't any, any sort of overall tracking which monitors the database activity, if you like, not, not built into Baselight anyway. Uh, another question is, uh, can I change my settings once I create an open job, I think, or a scene? Uh, so so if, if you created a scene, um, for example, with a, the wrong format and you wanted to change the format, um, you can't really change the fundamental settings of a scene once you've created it because those basic working settings define uh, the parameters for the timeline. Um, now you can, uh, again, this is a subject that we're going to cover later, but if I open on the views menu, if I open scene settings, this is where you can check all the settings for the current scene. Um, so for example, in the format and color section, um, you can see this is where we have the working format, the frame rate, and also the working color space. And they were set when we created the scene. Um, now, if I click on the working format button, you'll see that we no longer have that long list of formats available because we've effectively, we've committed this scene to working in this format. So that's defined the format of the timeline. Likewise, the frame rate can't be changed. It's now fixed at 25. So if you did create a scene with the wrong settings, um, what you would need to do would be to, to open the job manager again, um, delete that scene, um, and you would have to close the scene before you deleted it, but you can delete the scene from the um, uh, menu, from the actions menu here. So delete scene, and then you can recreate the scene again. So that's a good question. And how did you delete the jobs or a scene? Okay, yes. Yeah, so um, as I just mentioned there, so to delete the scene, in fact, I'll do that now. Um, first of all, I need to close the scene. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut uh, command W. And now that it's closed, that delete scene option is, is available here. So I can delete that. Now we do get a warning um, because uh, it, it can't be undone. It's not like a file which we can then retrieve from the trash. Uh, once I've deleted that, it's gone from the database. There's no way of getting it back. Um, and the same applies to the job. In fact, if I delete um, the job, that's an even more serious thing to do, of course. The job is now completely gone. Every single scene has been deleted. Now, because of that, and because that's obviously quite a serious thing to do, um, Baselight automatically makes a backup of the entire database. So every scene, and therefore every, sorry, every job, and therefore every scene is backed up every night automatically um, into a location. Normally it's onto your main RAID. So it's RAID protected as well as backed up. Um, and that happens um, on a weekly cycle. So you actually have seven backups, one for each day of the week, and then the oldest backup gets um, overwritten. Um, but that means that you've always got a complete snapshot of all your project data uh, up to, usually it's, it's 4 a.m. the night before when the automatic backup happens. So we, we have tried to make it um, as, uh, as safe as possible. Okay, and we have another question here. It says, is there a way to lock a scene to prevent changes by mistake? Um, we currently don't have the ability to um, lock um, an individual scene. Um, in fact, we don't have the ability to lock scenes or, or jobs in the database. Um, that's a feature that we have on our, uh, our request list, and so it will be added uh, at some point in the future. Also a good question. Um, I, think, uh, I think that's it. I don't see more questions on the chat. Great. Um, okay, well, um, I'll stop sharing my, uh, my desktop now. Um, thanks, everybody, uh, for joining us. I see there was quite a crowd again today. Obviously, that video will now be, um, will, will, 
uh, edit the video and it'll be available in a few days time on our website in the training section and obviously anybody that wasn't able to join us live or joined late um, you can go back and review the video at any point so thanks again and um, we'll see you next time bye